Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm, Walther PPS M2 in 9mm, both single stack, both certainly marketed to the concealed carry market, personal defense, both really good pistols. If you've seen me talk about either of these in the past, you know that I like them both. There's a lot to like about both, but they have some differences. I'm going to talk about those in this comparison. So let's get out to the range and do just that. Smith & Wesson M&P Shield Walther PPS M2 Both of these guns are very fine examples of single stack slim 9mm concealed carry handguns and quite honestly if you go into the gun store and you come out with either one of these I'm going to tell you you chose wisely. But I'll give you my feedback on what I think about each one of them from a shooting perspective. We'll take a look at the dimensions, the specs, and general uh, information about each one. And uh, if you're in the market and you're thinking about maybe one or the other, I'll try to give you some information to help you out. Both of these pistols happen to be wearing the rubberized Talon grip. That's kind of a kind of an automatic thing for me to put those on and if you like Talon grips or you haven't tried them and you want to try them go to talongungrips.com use the code Justin O capital J capital O and you'll get 10% off your entire order. Do a little bit of fun shooting starting out with the M&P shield. I'm at seven yards not too far away from my target. Textbook self-defense distance Love the sight picture, and I love the ergonomics. Gun feels great in your hand. It's got a nice trigger. It's got a good, comfortable grip. This was the flush magazine. That holds seven rounds. Go to the extended magazine. It's extended only by one. It holds eight rounds. Ah, the shield. <laughs> There's no wonder this gun is probably still the most popular single stack 9mm carry gun. It is a joy to shoot. The Walther PPS now. Big notable difference between the Walther PPS and the M&P Shield. Walther PPS standard flush magazine that I'm starting out with here holds six. And the extended magazine holds seven. So one round shorter in each magazine than the M&P Shield. If that's important to you, you'll want to make note. PPS also has an awesome sight picture. The ergonomics are a little different, but for me, still very comfortable. The gun feels slightly thinner in the hand, and it could just be the way they've shaped that. Killer trigger. I like the trigger a little better in the Walther. Not a big surprise if you've shot Walthers. 
you know they are pretty much renowned now for making incredible triggers in striker fired handguns. This one's no doubt. <laughs> this one's no doubt or whatever. Hey, by the way, I'm really proud to announce that uh, there are coming very soon, just an opinion, PVC vinyl patches that say, relax, it's just an opinion. Just like the logo on this channel, the new logo that was done by Hunter of Design, which is awesome. Well, these patches are offered exclusively by Patriot Patch Company, and they're going to be same high quality you see on the, is this patch on my hat. So if you're interested, the link is down in the description of this video. You can go pre-order them now. And while you're there, definitely take a look at the other stuff they've got. They've got a lot of really cool stuff, and it's all very pro-gun. So I did do some accuracy testing as well with these two pistols. I did it from 10 yards. I did it from a handheld rest. And I used the exact same ammunition in the exact same order for each gun. My caveat is always with this shooter on this day as far as the results go. But the results were pretty interesting in this case. I'll let you watch the actual accuracy testing and then I'll show you the results. Starting out with Spear Gold Dot. Five rounds each. Starting out at the upper. left and we'll go clockwise. Ten yards. using a six o'clock hold, putting the diamond bottom diamond point on top of the front sight. Next up, Freedom Munitions. You got a nice balance of self-defense ammo, range ammo, expensive ammo, inexpensive ammo. Going to the upper right, same hold pattern. Next up, Remington UMC. Upper middle class ammo, bottom right. Okay. Up next, JC Arms and Ammo. Uh, I learned about JC Arms and Ammo from the We Like Shooting show that I, I like to listen to. Ten yards. And last, but I'm almost willing to bet you not least, Sig Sauer Elite Performance 
V-Crown self-defense ammo. We're going to go into the center of the target for this. And this time I'm going to hold center. There's the M&P. Okay. Walther, PPS. Ten yards. Starting with spear, gold dot. At the upper left. Hold point will be the same. Hold point will be six o'clock with the point of the diamond right at the top of the front sight. Okay, next up. Freedom Munitions, full metal jacket, upper left, okay next up Remington, upper middle class. JC Arms and Ammo. And last and not least, Sig Sauer Elite Performance V Crown self defense ammo going to the center. And this is where I will change my hold point to a center hold. And there you have it. boys and girls. Looks like <laughs> with that shooter on that day, PPS was definitely, notably, the more accurate pistol. All right, I'm going to try a little one-handedness now. I guess I could try a little kindness or I could try a little tenderness but I'm gonna try a little one-handedness. Start out with the shield. A very, very easy gun to shoot, one-handed. Recoil management is simple. Muzzle lift is minimal. Sights come right back on target quickly. That makes it a really good self-defense gun because I haven't looked at the numbers. I don't study it like, you know, some of the gurus in the industry like Masayub, but I'll bet you probably, it, probably I would think at least half 
self-defense shootings uh, are done with one hand because either your other hand is busy doing something else or defending yourself in some way or simply because of time, you know, getting the gun out and, and driving it forward and, and starting to shoot. So uh, it could be, you know, awkward positions or whatever. So I think a lot of self-defense shooting is probably done one-handed. And so I always like when I'm evaluating a carry gun, especially, I always like to make sure I can shoot it one-handed. Ah, I forgot I had that extra round. That's right, this is the M&P. It has eight. All right, so how about the PPS? Same thing, one hand. Very similar, very similar. The, uh, the very back of the, the tang of the grip there does bump my thumb knuckle a little bit. I think I've mentioned that in the past, or not, <laughs> but uh, a little more so than the M&P does. But if I were to shoot this gun regularly, that's something I could easily train, train away just in terms of a slight variation of grip. Um, but it's a comfortable gun to hold. Again, easy to keep this thing on target with one hand. Sight picture is very good. Recoil impulse is minimal, and muzzle flip also seems to be minimal. Sight comes back on target quick, allowing for fast makeup shots. Yes, <laughs> yes indeed, I could live with that. Good stuff. So one of the range days I was out comparing these two guns, I was lucky enough to run into my friend Bree, who you may remember from Walther CCP video. And she was kind enough to be a guinea pig with these two pistols as well and shoot them both and just tell me what she thought. So it's always nice to have somebody else's opinion. And I don't know how many more times I'll be able to get her opinion because she recently beat me and several other people at an IDPA match and the last time I saw her before this day Shooting USA had a camera stuck in her face and they were interviewing her and That's a true story So I don't think she'll be taking my calls very much longer Go for it What do you got first, the M&P? Huh? M&P first? Yep, yep. M&P. Okay. Ooh. What was that woo for? Uh, my first one yeah. completely missed the target. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was not a. It was an operator. Woo. <laughs> oh, gotcha. To the next bag. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever you want to do. Whatever. Whatever works for you in terms of like kind of getting an idea for how they compare. All right. So if you want to go one mag in each and then back, you know, back yeah, and maybe forth. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Whatever.
The M and P felt better in my hands. Yeah. Like it definitely fit me better. I think the trigger was a little better. The Walther I felt more accurate with, but that could be that the sight alignment okay. fits the 1911 that I generally shoot better than right. cool. the M&P. So it could, I really, the M&P really felt better in my hands. Yeah. Um, the Walther, the first magazine was a little easier to seat than the M&P, but the lo longer M&P magazine was mm -hmm. a lot easier to seat. Average. Six pounds, 11 and a half ounces. That is for the shield. Five. Okay, and the average for the Walther. Six pounds, two ounces. Okay, I'm gonna go in reverse order now. Shoot the PPS first. I've been shooting uh, Remington UMC and Herder Select most of the day. And I'm gonna switch up now. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of Sig Sauer. Elite Performance, 124 grain V-Crown. Jacket hollow point. This ammo was provided to me by Sig Sauer, so I want to disclose that. So if you think that's going to affect anything or influence anything, you are now armed with that information. I'm going to use the head of the target, since I haven't used the head of the target yet. We can see where these go. I always think these, uh, these Sig rounds leave really pretty holes. So we'll see if, that, if that's the case. Ooh, it's a nice group. Very nice group. They got, uh, looks like at least three of them in the same hole. Go now to the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. Same thing, same ammo. Six hour elite performance. V-Crown. Now when you move from range ammo, you know, like Remington or Herders or whatever, to uh, self-defense ammo, whether it's going to be Sig Sauer or Hornady or Spear, Gold Dot, or anything like that, you will feel a difference, which is why if you have a carry gun, you should get out to the range at least once a year, I'd say at least twice a year if possible, and shoot a box of your carry ammo through it. Get used to how that feels and where it, where it hits. You know, that's important too. So here we go. The Smith at the head. Okay. It felt to me like there was a little bit less perceived recoil with the Walther than with the M&P, but on such a small scale, barely measurable. Very, very close, these two guns, in virtually every way. I'm not trying to ride the fence. If I had a strong opinion, I would tell you. Uh, if I thought one was a clearly better gun than the other, I would tell you that too. Uh, I have no, <laughs> I got no axe to grind either way. But uh, boy, you, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong with the shield or with the PPS. So the big question is, you know, the shield is the king of the hill when it comes to single stack nines. Is the Walther as good? I think it probably is as good. There are differences. So those differences come down to personal preference. Which one feels more comfortable to you? Which one do you seem to like shooting better? Maybe you prefer one sight picture over the other a little bit. Uh, things like that. Now the one big difference, big difference, the shield gives you more capacity. And that is important. So um, I would have to, if for no other reason, I would have to tip the scale in favor of the M&P shield simply because I'm better armed. I got more rounds on me. Okay, let's do a quick field strip of both of these pistols. 
they both shot the exact same number of the exact same ammunition. So just a quick comparison. Field stripping the PPS, make sure the trigger's been pulled, take the pressure off of your slide lock, drop it down with these tabs, and just pull the slide off. M&P, we use our takedown lever, rotate that clockwise, pull the trigger, and take the slide off. Not much to look at there other than just seeing the differences between the two guns. Different designs, different ways of approaching how to make them go bang. Both of them work really well. Here are the two slides. I'm not going to disassemble them any further than that. Take the barrels out. But you can see after, again, each of these guns shooting the exact same ammo in the exact same numbers on the same day, <laughs> or days, there are the results. The PPS is on top, M&P shield is on the bottom, and the PPS, just like its predecessor, the Classic, tends to shave a little bit more brass off the case. But uh, that's about it. There's a little bit of, little bit of, there's some flecks of brass up in the slide that are not present in the shield and again same ammo same day same everything um, so you can see that they they sort of foul a little differently you can also see that the PPS is slightly longer by that much oh one thing I did want to point out thanks for reminding me whoever it was that shouted that out um, on the, the rails, basically the M&P has, whoops, for friction surface, the rails on the M&P, we have what's pretty typical for a polymer framed pistol. We have our four points of contact here at the frame that are going to ride in the grooves on our slide, and that makes our rail system. On the PPQ, we have two points of contact on one side which are very wide they're about an inch or more wide and then on the other side we have a continuous run of about I'd say four inches so you have a lot more slide to frame fit surface area on the PPS than you do on the shield or for that matter most polymer handguns of this type. All right, so I was shooting the Walther and was shooting the Smith & Wesson. Let's see how I did with all that shooting. There's the bulk of it right there at the body. Uh-oh, looks like I'm down one. That was, uh, again, primarily uh, Remington UMC and Herder Select. And then I went up top with just the Sig Sauer self-defense ammo, the V-Crown. And I told you, man, it makes nice holes, doesn't it? Like wad cutters. There's all those shots.